figure out the probability? What was one of the first things that we need to do with, with these numbers to help us figure it out? Anasita. Um, wouldn't you have to add up how many ketchup and mustard and salsa and mayonnaise? Yeah, we have to add up everything. My students were a lot more engaged using this program. Um, it's nice because normally I use like, maybe an overhead projector or something to teach math. And this way I can keep the lights on and the kids are up and they're all looking, you know, at the computer screen and it's colorful and it's fun and it has real things that they, they use and do every day, pictures and graphics that, that, that's in their life. And so that was a lot more engaging for them. They like the, the sound when I have it on. And it's interactive. They can come up and use part of the computer as well and help me. So they're definitely all on task. Good job. You, you can make as many vending machines as you want, but the rule is... I actually don't use groups that well in my, in my class because my students have a tendency to, you know, to be off task and to be goofing around and talking. And with this program, they're, they're, because they're all understanding what's being taught, the mini lesson beforehand, when they go to the challenge, they're excited and they're engaged and they want to work together and they want to solve the problems. Um, and they, they were on task and they were working hard. I'm going to have her talk, okay? Remember, you can use a number line to represent and compare probabilities. For example, since there are no black gumballs in the jar, the probability of getting a black gumball can be marked at zero. It's an impossible event. I know one thing that I like and my students like is that it use a lo uses a lot of academic language, but it explains it very well, and it also explains it at, at, a, at a more layman's term. I have ESL learners, and it, it's hard for them to come in and have these big words sometimes, especially in math. And um, the Play-Doh does a very good job of, of using vocabulary that's, that's easy for them to understand, but it also compares it to the academic language, so then they can, oh, recognize it the next time. I guess just one thing that I really noticed today using it is how so many of my students came up today and were like, Ms. H, that was great, that was easy, I totally understood that lesson today. And with my regular curriculum, you know, I might spend two, three, four days a week teaching a concept before we have it down. And I had my kids, you know, at the end of the day, I do thumbs up if they get it, thumbs sideways if they feel okay, and thumbs down if they are lost. And I had them all thumbs up and we could move on and go ahead. Um, and, and they liked it, they enjoyed it, they were into it, engaged, and I got through, today I got through more material in 45 minutes than I would in my normal 45 minute math block, and they got it. So that's one thing that I really liked about it, and I look forward to using it more.